Hello my fellow geeks, I'm Mark and today on Elite Geek we're going to take a look at a brand new printer that I'm pretty sure is the cheapest mono resin printer you can get. This is the Voxel Lab Proxima and we're going to take a look, we're going to get it out of the box, take a look at all the settings, we're going to do a first test print and I'm going to give you my initial impressions and then after I've got some more experience with it I'll probably do an update to it and then some more detailed comparisons versus other printers like my Anycubic Photon Mono. I'm going to say this is uh, the biggest item I've ever tried on the bench so I've had to do something new here. We'll uh, hope the quality turns out. So in the top of the box here we have a getting started guide, a quick start guide. That's good. I actually am an instruction reader so I will go through this and follow the process for getting it all set up. US power cord. I do like it's just a standard PC power cord so if I need to make a change or get a shorter one or a longer one or whatever I can do that easily without it being some proprietary thing. So the tools we have a metal scraper and a plastic scraper. It does say Flash Forge on it. Uh, Flash Forge is actually the manufacturer of Voxel Lab. Flash Forge has been around for a long time and is a very good company. So it has been filed down and it is pretty sharp. Yeah, that'll cut you. So I've seen a couple of places that send a regular scraper that haven't been sharpened and uh, I don't think that would work very well. So this has been and that's gonna do the job. The rest of the power cord, a set or a glove. You're gonna need more gloves than that. Set of Allen wrenches with some extra screws that hopefully we never need. But if we do, is that including a set screw? I recommend using better tools than this, but they will get the job done. At least they are uh, angled parts. So with those, uh, having the rounded edges there make these a whole lot easier to get it in and out of. Okay, so now under this is the printer, so I'm gonna have to uh, set this down. I don't wanna pull that out with it on its side. It's pretty much all in a single large piece of foam that covered it. And then we have the uh, case that I think will just come out right like that. I do, this is a dumb little thing, but I do appreciate that we have two pieces of foam. We have the top foam where you sell the top that goes all the way down. And then down in the box, there's one other piece of foam. So I like to keep all my boxes. I don't know which of these printers I'm gonna keep. Probably not all of them. So that is about as easy as I have seen for uh, restoring this box. And then if I do decide to get rid of this one, it'll be very easy to put back in this box. It's the little things, right? The printer is nicely protected. It all comes in several layers of baggage. So I'll take this off and go from there. I kind of like the orange cover especially with the lid. It's uh, it's different than the yellow that I have for pretty much every other printer that I've got. And it feels, feels maybe a little stronger. So inside here now we have the foam with a uh, build plate on it. Oh, this will slide off easily, good. So the build plate already has a texture. Some manufacturers ship these with like a shiny, shiny finish. And this already has a texture to it. I think that will help printing right out of the box. Yeah, that, I really like that. That's a nice finish. This is weird. So this is very different than what most of the other manufacturers are doing for leveling. So uh, we'll see when we get to the leveling through the quick start guide exactly how this part works. So taking a look at the vat, I, uh, I like this a lot, I think. So it'll just loosen and slide out without having to remove those screws completely has notches on the side here. I don't have any others like this at all. There's a protective film I'm gonna leave on the bottom of that right now that will just uh, peel off. These feel like they are protective sheets that came with this original FEP, which is inside of here. I really like the locking arms, so it slides on and off. It's similar to the Mono, but it seems like it'll catch a little better, and it looks like a really sharp drip tray or drip edge that I like too. And it is marked with a max resin level, which is nice. I don't know how much that is. It looks like it's pretty low in the vat to me, though. Seems like seems like I can get more than that in there. Maybe we'll test that later. This does have a mono screen, as I mentioned. Uh, this is the cheapest mono screen printer that I know of. It is really, really well built, though. This is a solid metal case. I expected it to be cheap plastic. It's hard to tell. The screen looks nice. It's got a pretty large touch screen on it. I'm not 100% sure on the strength of this. It is nice and thick on the edges, but it's not a solid piece of metal, but it does seem to have good supports in it. And where it matters also for connecting, this seems to be strong. I think, I think it's probably really well engineered versus just putting a large piece of metal on it. It seems to be well engineered there. Now it is a single linear rail compared to some of the other printers will have dual linear rails. We'll see if that makes a difference in the end. All right, like I said, I'm gonna look at the quick start guide and I'll come back and we'll get it all leveled and tested. They do have 724 after sales support and after sales email. I've heard the support from this company is just 
some of the best around. So that's part of what I'm looking forward to, not ever having to use, but knowing it's there if I need it. So one thing I didn't point out earlier, it does come with a USB stick. There it is, and it was in the bag with the quick start guide. I was kind of nervous, I couldn't find it. There it was, in with this quick start guide. These instructions are bad. They're like really bad. It doesn't make sense. It's not written natively in English, obviously. You can probably get through it, but just in case, I'm gonna make a dedicated video just for leveling this thing because I think people are gonna have problems with it. I'm gonna record that and then I'm gonna come back to this. And we're back. My uh, build plate is all level. I've got a piece of paper here and it slides in pretty smooth all the way across. This corner's a little bit tight that I mentioned in my leveling video, but I think it's because of the tape. Um, but I think the surface, print surface is equal all the way across here. So now we're going to take the USB stick. Actually, I want to raise it. I don't like leaving this like this, and plus I need to raise it in order to install the vat. So we're going to do manual 10 millimeter. And we're going to go up 10. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, this is annoying. Maybe they'll update this in the firmware. See, I pressed it 10 times, it's going up 10, 10, 10, 10. My Anycubic doesn't do that. It, I press it and it moves up the first one and then it moves up the whole rest of the height. So this is gonna take a while. That, that could be annoying. It still was working, at least it accepted them, but not my preferred method. The USB stick position is in the front corner, which is really nice, I think. Okay, here's a weird one. The USB stick, see that's generally considered to be the right way up. And that's how it fits. Most printers have that upside down, so that's kind of uh, unique there. Right, so now going back on the control panel, I want to do a print. I don't want to actually do a print, I just want to look at it here. So we have nozzle STL, Proxima manual, which I uh, appreciate. Oh, there's, so there is a full video on here. Slicing software is on here. One thing I'm noticing that I really, really like, oh, chip view box, there's newer versions than that. So one thing I'm noticing is that I can see the folder. For printing, I print lots of things over and over and over. And being able to see the folders, and it's kind of annoying that I can see files that have nothing to do with the prints that I'm going to be doing. But if I can organize my prints into folders, so when I need to go print something, I can just click on that folder and not have to scroll through the whole page, that is really nice. Interesting method to go back. So here's the infamous Voxel Lab Deer, and you'll see here it is an STL file. It is not sliced. So I actually have to go in and I'm going to go slice this software now. Why they don't provide that all preset and just ready to go so you can try it right out of the box, I don't know. Okay, I've got the USB stick here, which I'm going to reinstall. I have a sliced file. If I have a successful slice, one thing I'm going to do is I'll make this file available to you so you can just download it and load it on your stick and be ready to go. It will vary a little from resin to resin. I'm using a frozen water washable gray. This is my go-to resin that I use on almost everything. I love this resin. So I've got the uh, USB stick reinstalled. I've sliced the software. I've got it 1.4 seconds per layer for the main layers. I'm gonna be using frozen water washable gray resin. Uh, I really, really like this resin. Uh, this is not my printing area. This is my recording area. Normally I wouldn't print in here, but the smell won't be too bad with this, so I think I'll be able to stand it while we uh, test this out. If not, the next segment may be in a different area. So I've got my vat here. I'm going to remove the bottom. See the holes there? You can see that it was uh, installed or shipped this way. And I've got the top one. Just check the vat for any problems. There is a little bit of a uh, dimple there, but not enough that I think is gonna cause a problem. I am wearing gloves already. As soon as I touch my bottle, I want to wear gloves. I don't even touch my bottles of resin because you do get resin on the outside of these. So I'm going to slide my tray in place here. I really like this tray. I think the downside is that you won't be able to ever fit any other trays in here. I have a Solval tray that I use with my mono that works great. It's not going to work in this. So I have two pieces of advice if you're just getting started with printing. One, don't ever touch your touch screen here with gloves on. So you have two ways to do it. Don't ever touch them with gloves on because you don't want to get resin residue on the touch screen. So I never use that. The other option is to use a tool. So this will work with something like one of these wrenches. You can use this. So I want to, in this case, move, and you can do both just to keep it extra clean. But I want to raise the uh, layer here, the top build plate up some. 
so I can get into the vat easier for my resin. That's just about as high as it goes there. So that same advice goes for touching the cover. Don't ever touch your cover with gloves on. That way it will stay clean and you don't have to worry about sometimes touching it with or without and getting residue from the resin on it, which you just don't want to touch. Don't come in contact with this at all. Normally I would be wearing a mask for this too, but I can't exactly record the video with a mask on. So I'm gonna get my bottle of resin and make sure the lid is on. Good shape. Okay, this resin I found mixes really well, really easy, so I don't shake it for too terribly long. So I'm going to uh, go up to the max. I don't need to go to the max line. Now with my other printers, I have never had a problem with bubbles in the resin, so I never wait on this to do anything. But now that I have that all set up, I'm gonna take off my gloves. Now I'll put the cover on. So that way I have guaranteed there is no resin on my cover. Now, I'm gonna print, and there's my new Voxel Lab Deer FDG. I had to slice this in Chitty Box. I am a lychee user, I love lychee, but uh, I had, that does not support this today. I asked them and they told me it's being added very soon, but for now I had to use Chitty Box. As I mentioned, if this works, I will provide this file to you. Click there, have a nice visual of it. That's pretty standard anymore. Hit print. Oh, so it's kind of loud. There's a fan on it that kicked on automatically. My mono does not have a fan. Okay, I'm gonna try and get this set up at an angle so you can see. There we go. First level, why is it beeping at me? Okay, so the first level, level is our first layer set for 30 seconds. I'm gonna lift and go back down. They might be right about that max level because I did not fill it all the way and it's set up pretty high. So I'm going to uh, switch to a quick time now and we'll be back when it's done. The estimate for this is 3 hours and 15 minutes. I do like the information here. It shows me the file name, it shows me what it's printing, it shows me the time remaining and how long it's been printing. So that's, that's kind of nice and what level or what layer it's on right now. later okay so i've been doing a lot of printing on this it's been my main printer for my smaller pieces mainly i'm not printing my big tanks on it so much i do have one example of a part that i printed on there but overall i've been very satisfied we'll uh, take a look first at some of my results this is the very first one i printed and i didn't get it cleaned great i didn't get the legs cleaned very well but it's got a really nice texture to it. It looked good. The antlers turned out really well. I like the details on those. It's kind of a neat little model. I want to do it again sometime just to get it clean better because I didn't really know what I was needing to do, what to expect, but I do like it. I printed several tests and you can see here, I got pretty good results. I could use a little more dialing in, but the spacing is pretty good on it. The finish is good. The anti-aliasing on this is really, really nice. You may have seen some of these on the channel, uh, The uh, my Commissar. I started using this as a test model and we'll probably start giving them away on my website, EliteGeekMinis.com. Aliasing is, you can still see a little of it. Let's check another one. Right there in those spots, you do get a little on the cape. It's more visible than I can feel it. So I've got one of these that's primed that's already gone away and I couldn't see it once I uh, primed it and shipped it away. Here's another example of a trooper. Um, and one, part of what I'm doing with this one, it's got enough detail that I've magnetized him and uh, can clip him on. There we go. Give him magnetized arms. So there's a whole bunch of options there. And the quality, I like the quality of his uh, coat here. It just turned out, has really nice detail that pops. I have not done a final cleanup on here. This is basically just right off the sprue. That line in his face is a hair, <laughs> not a line in the print. I don't know where that came from. That's not mine. So then a turret. I've got really, really nice finish on the edges here. Here's a bigger piece. I do have a little bit of texture around the edge here, but overall it has turned out 
really nice. There, there's a little bit of texture. This is printed at a 45 degree angle. It's not 100% perfect, but this was also printed on high speed. So pros and cons of this printer. It's very loud. It's very, very loud. I can actually hear it from upstairs. I thought there was a problem the first time I went upstairs while it was still printing and I heard it and I thought something was wrong and I came down like, no, it's just the printer. It's very, very loud. I'm gonna have a video coming for that. I'm gonna install these. These are dampers. These are made for the motors that are used, the stepper motors that are used in 3D printing. So I'm gonna try one of these to see how it affects the volume. Stay tuned for that. It only works right now in Chitty Box. I mainly use Lychee and I, right now I have to export it and then import it into Chitty Box and slice it. The Lychee team has told me that it will be added very soon. So I was able to get Vroom working. If you're not familiar with Vroom, it's basically high speed printing. I cranked up the speed on this, but it only worked successfully reliably after I installed Infep. So I'm gonna have another video about that, so hopefully tomorrow, but i can tell you this Commissar was printed there he is a little better. This was printed at high speed with Vroom settings. And that this uh, typical part where I have the issues with a lot of models turned out about the same. I mean, the quality turns out looks pretty darn good for printing about twice as fast, about half the time when I installed Infep. And I've got a video on how to install a new FEP in this. That video, I didn't use Infep. Uh, I replaced that one again as a test with Infep and it works really well. If you're not familiar with EPAX, Infep, uh, well, stay tuned on that. It's a little bit more expensive, but man, to be able to print super duper fast seemed well worth it. Another thing I like about this is the parts are readily available. You can get replacement screens and extra vats and all that kind of stuff. I do like the vat. I don't care for the screws that you use to tighten it down. But the thing I really like about the FEP is it's the easiest replacement. I don't have to measure it. I don't have to, I just put the bottle cap on and screw it down. It's just pre-adjusted, ready to go. Super duper duper easy. I don't really care for the ball joint, the way the print head attaches. Um, it did move on me once. I probably just didn't have it down tight enough, but it did cause me to have to readjust it or re-level it. It's almost too much movement. I don't want it to go sideways. It does come with a 30-day unconditional replacement warranty, which I really like. One of my favorite features is actually that it can open folders. I print a lot of different things over and over and over, and being able to categorize them into folders and not have to just scroll through and find the right files over and over, I really, really like that feature, and I hope more brands add that. And last but not least, it's it's really loud. Not just the motor, the beeper. It's so, so loud. Thankfully, it can be turned off. See, just turn it off. As soon as you get this, just turn it off because it's so loud, so, so loud. I mentioned this is about a $200 printer. Voxelab does have a $150 version too. It's very similar, but it's a little bit smaller and it's not a mono screen. I would recommend spending the extra $50 if you go with the Voxelab to get the mono version and make it a little bit bigger. But if you have a super duper price crunch, $150 is kind of a steal for something that's made this well. So if you found this useful, leave a like and a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the Voxel Lab Proxima for $200. The fact that we can do this today for $200 just kind of blows my mind. So until next time, remember, if you're going to be a geek, be an elite geek. There, now that I'm done recording this, I can go turn it back on because it's kind of hard to record with it on in the other room even because it's so loud. Really nice prints, but so loud.